Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio video. My name is Floppy and in today's tutorial we're going to be going over how to make a death counter also known as a death system inside of Roblox Studio. So how this death system and death counter is going to work is it is basically counting how many times you have died inside of the game. So the ways you can die and how it will register if you go and reset your character that is going to be classed as a death. If another player has to come and kill you with a sword in game then that is also going to be classed as a death. If you go and touch a part which has got a script in it that um, kills you, then that is also going to be classed as a death. Every single way on how or every single thing that can kill you is going to be registered. So if you had to go and walk on a part that's got a script in it that kills you, then one leader stat is going to be added to your death list, saying that you have died one time. Same thing if a player had to come up with you, uh, come up to you with a sword, and then, then they killed you. Then they, for example, um, the person who got killed would then be given another lead stat in their death section, basically saying how many times they died. Now this video is pretty much matching up with the previous tutorial I did on how to make a kill system, which basically adds a kill leader stat into a player a player's. Um, uh, leader stats if they go and actually go and kill someone so you could really use these tuto two tutorials to make a death and kill system uh, or sorry yes a death and kill system so if they go and kill someone they're then given a leader stat but the person who died is then given a death leader stat so you could really use these two tutorials to get together but I'm just making them separate because they are technically separate topics and separate scripts in today's tutorial, we're going to be going over three scripts. Now, you may think, oh goodness me, three scripts, this is a big system. I can assure you it is a not, not a big system. The first two scripts are if you are managing data or not. So, in today's tutorial, we're going to have two options on how you can store a player's data. You can either not store player's data and it just shows up on their screen for... Um, until they go and leave the game and then they join back and then their stats are back at zero. So there's one script, the script uh, option one is um, the player will get the leader stats, all great and that, but let's say the player had to go and leave and then rejoin, their leader stats would not be there. But in option two or script two, we are now implementing a data store and this is basically going to store the data. So when the player leaves the server and let's say they've got five uh, deaths, they leave the server, they join back. When they join back, they'll load in with five deaths already simply because that data of their previous um, playtime was stored where in option one or script one, nothing is stored. It is just uh, displaying that current in-game experience, uh, the amount of deaths that has happened inside of that experience in that particular server. So it is not going to be something that you can carry along and that saves to the player's character. So if they join back in a month's time, that their stats will be there. That is not the case. So option one, if you're wanting to just have a in-server death counter and not for it to go and actually save, that would be option one, the no, not non-saving um, leader stats. Then option two is the saving leader stats, which includes the data store. So for starters, we want to make sure our explorer and properties are enabled. If our explorer and properties are not enabled, head up to the top bar here, click on view and enable explorer and properties and they should show up somewhere over your screen. So now that we've enabled our explorer and properties, we now want to go over to our game settings. And this is something I forgot to mention in my previous video with the uh, where I went over the kill system. I forgot to mention that you actually need to make sure that your API services are on. This basically is what manages the data and this allows um, services such as the data store to operate and to actually function correctly. But we're going to be adjusting enable studio access to API services which goes over data stores. So we want to enable that and then we want to click on save. So now that we've enabled our API services, we now want to head over to our service group service. And then what we're going to be adding first is actually the data. So we're going to go and start with option one that is just going to be displaying the data and is not going to be saving the player's data. So now that you've inserted the script inside of your service script service, you now want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that is in the description, bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code and then paste in the new code. Now you can see option one here is a very simple script simply because we are not managing data. So all the script is really doing is creating our leader stats which is going to show in our top right here if we go and join in now. But we're not going to go and test it out yet because we haven't gotten and adjusted anything and there's no really need to go and test it out as of yet. So depending on what you want your deaths to be called. So on default I'm calling it a death system or a death counter. So when a player joins into the game they will have their death. Whatever you want your deaths to be called. So if let's say you wanted it to be 
oofs, for example, they, that player has oofed five times, you'd go and change that right here in between on line seven where it goes deaths.name equals text here. So you go and change text here to whatever you want your leader stat name to be. So our leader stat is just gonna be called deaths, but as I was just saying, if you are wanting your leader stat to be called oofs, the player has oofed five times, then you'd go and change this to oof. Oh, that's off. <laughs> to oof, just like that. But because our one is going to be that player has got five deaths, we're going to keep it as deaths, just like that. So I'm going to quickly go over the code here just so you can still learn at the same time. So it goes on line one, it goes game.players.player added. This created a function and this identifies our player. Local leader stat equals instance.new folder. So that is creating a folder inside of the um, inside of the game, which is basically going to be holding all our values. And this is a value right here. Our death is a value. So then we go over here to where it says leader stats name. This changes the leader stat. This changes the folder folders name to leader stats. Then it changes the leader stats, our leader stat, which is our folder, which is our leader stats folder. And it changes the parent into our player, which was added there, which we mentioned on line one. Then it goes on line six and it goes local deaths. And this basically identifies our value. So basically what is happening here is it goes local deaths equals instant dot new int value. So this int value is now going to go into the leader stats folder because what basically is happening is leader stats are all controlled in a folder and you'll join into a couple games and you'll see that they have multiple different values. You may see for example in a simulator you may see there's a one value called clicks, there's one value called eggs and there's maybe one value called coins. These are all different values that sit inside of the leader stats folder. Death, deaths.name, so we're going to our int value and we're changing our name just like what we did up here to the folder. We change it to deaths, then we set the value of what we want the player to join in with. So for example, let's say you are wanting the player to join in with 10 deaths already, you go and change deaths.value to 10 just like that. But we're going to keep it as zero because when we join in, the player hasn't already died 10 times. Then it goes death .par deaths.parent equals the leader stats, basically moving our int value and changing the parent of our int value to our leader stats folder, which we created just up here. So now this is basically what manages our leader stats and this does not save any leader stats. So if you're wanting it to make it so when the player leaves the server, all their data is lost and how many times they've died is lost, this is the script for you. So you can keep this option. It really depends on what you are wanting inside of your specific game, but I'm gonna quickly go over then the uh, actual one that goes over the data store. So if you are not wanting a just a, uh, a system that just displays the uh, data inside of the leader stats and when the player joins it gets deleted if you're wanting to involve a data store into it what you want to do you want to go down to the description of this video copy and paste script 2 or option 2 down in the description bring it back to Roblox Studio remove all the previous code and then paste in the new code and as you can see it is a much larger script than we were just working with now I'm going to quickly go over the main points of it because I'm not going to go over the entire script as simply because we're going to be here till tomorrow morning. So I'm just going to go over the brief parts of it just so you can kind of get a bit of an understanding on what you need to go and change to make it work correctly. So now depending before we before we go over the code, depending if you have other additional data stores which you have used from a previous tutorial from me, you want to go over here on line four where it says local data and you want to change this da this data name right here. Now this is basically the name of your data store. So in many of my other tutorials, I use the exact same data store script and they all work great. But the only problem is every single time the name is one. So let's say you followed a coin tutorial and you included the data store script and the data store name is one and you haven't gone and changed it, you wanna go and change this uh, number here or name to something else. Let's say you wanna change it to oof. You can go and change this data store to oof. But I'm just going to be changing this to two simply because, um, I mean, why not? But I think that's what a majority of people are going to do. It doesn't really matter what your data store is called. You just want to go and change it accordingly. Or if you keep it as one, let's say you have the coin system and then you've also got this data saving system that saves the deaths. What's going to happen if you've got it at number one, it is going to overlap with the other data store and kind of confuse things and mix things up and kind of make a bit, bit of a bit of a mess. So you want to go and change the name of the data stores depending if you have the exact same data store that uh, I've mentioned in previous tutorials. So now I'm gonna go over the parts that you can go and change. So on here on line nine, you can go and change whatever your currency is actually gonna be called, whatever your leader stat is called. So remember our one was deaths, so there's deaths, but let's say yours was oofs, you change this to oofs just like that. But we're gonna keep it as deaths. 
The, the same thing happens here. Function, player added, identifies our player, creates the leader stats, and then it just manages a whole lot of the data down here. But I'm gonna go over the areas that you need to go and change. So depending if you went and changed deaths to something else, for example, let's say oofs, you wanna go and change it right here. You wanna go and change deaths to oofs right there. You wanna go and change deaths to oofs right there also. And then also just here. Oh, sorry, just there. So you basically go change, if you've gone and changed your leader stat name, change that, change that, change that, and change that. Change all the green and the blues that have got the deaths. These deaths right here that are currently like a gray uh, color of their, yeah, gray color, you do not necessarily need to change. Um, it's unnecessary. You only need to go and change the blue deaths and the green deaths that we have pointed out right there. So there's only four areas that you need to go and change if you have gone and customized your leader stat name. So now we've inserted our leader stat. Now for this tutorial, we're gonna keep the data store. We're gonna be including the data store in today's tutorial. But obviously if option one works better for you, go and use option one. It's gonna work the exact same. You just simply won't have the uh, data storing when a player goes and leaves the server. So that is all our data store and that is all us, all of the, um, the leader stat creation sorted out. So we wanna head over here, click on the X button next to your script. And now we wanna click on the plus button again next to our service script service and insert another script. So now that you've inserted another script inside of your service script service, you can feel free to go and change the names of the script if you are wanting to be a bit more organized and actually know what's what. For example, you're going, you could go and change the data script to um, let's say data store or I don't know which script is what here but you could go and change this to data store. Okay, well, I've gone and changed it on the wrong one. So that one is the data store. So you can go and change the name to that just like that and it will not affect the, the script in any way if you wanna be a little bit more organized. But other than that, now that you've got the script inside of the service script service, your new script, you wanna go down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that is in the description, bring it back to Roblox Studio. This is gonna be called script three. This is gonna be called probably something like main death script. You wanna go down to the description, copy and paste this code, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. Now the script is pretty straightforward, pretty basic, and this basically just manages when a player actually gets a leader stat. Basically when the humanoid dies, then they're gonna be given a leader stat. So first of all, I'm gonna quickly go over the areas that you can go and change. If you are in a little bit of a bit of a rush and trying to get the system done and you're not really too bothered about learning about it, I'll quickly go over the main parts for you. So here on line five, you wanna go and change whatever your leader stats, or you wanna go and change deaths to whatever your leader stat is called. Remember, if your leader stat is called oofs, you go and change that to oofs, just like that. Then, but we're gonna keep it as deaths. But then you wanna go and, well, you don't have to, but you can go and adjust how many times or how much currency is added to that value every single time a player dies. So here on line one, it goes game.players.player added. It creates a function and then we call that player. So that, that is basically identifying our player. Player.character added connect function. This now identifies our character. Then it finds our local humanoid. So our humanoid is basically what is actually inside of your Roblox character. This controls your walk speed, your jump power, your um, your health, legit every single thing that you can adjust in script is able to be adjusted through your humanoid. So it goes local humanoid equals character, wait for child humanoid, because your human humanoid is inside of your character, so we're waiting for it, and then once it found humanoid, it then moves on. Humanoid dot died, so when the humanoid has died, when the died, ha uh, when, when died has happened, or when a humanoid has died, it then creates another function, and then it goes local deaths equals player dot leader stats, find first child deaths. So we're basically identifying our deaths, which is our deaths leader stat, which goes player dot leader stats to our leader stats folder, find first child deaths. So that finds our deaths value. Again, as we just mentioned, if you've gone and changed deaths to something else, or you've gone and changed your leader stat name to something else, that would be, for example, oofs. If deaths then, so if there is that leader stat there inside of the player, then deaths dot value equals death dot value plus one. So we're taking our getting our deaths current value and changing it to death stop value, our death stop value plus one. So we're not necessarily going and making it equal something else. We're adding one leader stat onto our current value of our deaths. 
So now that you've gone and changed everything to how you would like it and you've got a little bit more of a better understanding about the code, you want to head up here, click on the X button next to your script, and now we can go and test this out. Now, it really depends on what you want to go and test this out in. You could go and test it out in your main Roblox game. It doesn't really matter, but for this tutorial, I'm going to be trying it out in the team test. Now, what you can also add if you are wanting a, to see multiple ways on how a player can actually die is you can actually go and add a kill brick, and that's what we're going to be doing here. So I'm not going to include this code in the description simply because it's kind of a little bit not related. I'm just going to be using this for demonstrations. So I'm just going to quickly go and put a script inside of this code and then paste in our death code. So basically, this is what a kill part is. This is what you often see in an obby. And just to make it look like a bit of a kill part, I'll change that to red just like that. So I'm going to go and anchor that just like that. And now I'm going to go and test it out. So realistically, when we go and join in now, and then we somehow die, we are then given one death leader stat, basically showing that we have died a single time. We've died once inside of the game. So we are now inside of the base plate, and I'm just gonna show you a couple demonstrations on how this works and making sure that it does actually register. So what, you're, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna click escape, and then I'm gonna go click R to reset and enter. And now you can see because our humanoid died, we were given one leader stat in the deaths. Same thing here, if I go run over this kill part now, my humanoid had gone and died, so then I was given another leader stat inside of our death's leader stat. The same thing happens, if someone had to come and attack me with a sword suddenly, I would then also die. So you can see either resetting or running over the kill part is going to give me a leader stat, saying that I have now gone and died three times inside of the server. But now because I've gone and added the, um, the data store to it, it will now save my data. So if I go and leave there just like I have then uh, just now, and I go click on team test again and load back into the base plate, you'll be able to see I still have my three leader stats. So we are now back inside of the base plate and there you have it, you can see our data saved. And when we join back in, we still have the three leader stats. If you guys are a little bit lost and you're needing a little bit of help getting the system working, feel free to contact us on Discord and we can happily help you out. But anyway guys, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you did enjoy, I'd appreciate it if you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell, and also do consider liking the video. I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.